God morgon allesammans. Varmt, varmt välkommen till den sista dagen av 2023 års upplaga av Nolo Week. Jag är så glad att ha dig med oss här idag. Även om det såklart är lite tråkigt att det är den sista dagen. Det, det känns som att det var igår som jag hälsade er alla välkomna. sa att jag skulle guida er genom den här veckan. Och nu står vi här. På den sista dagen. En dag som för mig är väldigt speciell. På många sätt. Och för er som inte har varit med under de tidigare dagarna och vet vad vi gör på Noli. Så har vi utvecklat ett digitalt verktyg för att möjliggöra för er som tar fram utbildningsinsatser. Att skapa personliga lärelser för era deltagare med stöd före, under och efter era träffar. Ett perfekt Komplement till ett existerande LMS där vi vill se till att ni lyckas med chefsjonveringen, lyckas med buddyparen. Så att vi tar vår ledarutveckling, våra onboardingprogram till nästa nivå. Och det finns lite mer information om Noli längre ner på streamen och du har också där möjlighet att signa upp med ett samtal direkt tillsammans med mig. Jag sa att den här dagen är lite speciell och det är den av ett antal olika anledningar. Det är såklart... Den sista dagen på den här veckan. En vecka som har blivit större och häftigare än vad jag och vi någonsin lyckades drömma om. Att vi har samlats här tusen personer under en veckas tid. Fokuserat arbetat med att utveckla vårt lärande och se till att driva utbildningar på ett bättre sätt. Jag tycker det är skitcoolt. Och tänk vilken potential det faktiskt har. Tack till alla er som har varit med oss. Tack till alla ni som har kämpat för att fånga upp de här små sakerna som gör att vi kan få utbildningsinsatser att leda till nya effekter. Och det betyder massor för mig att ni har varit med här ska ni veta. Det betyder massor för oss på Noli att ni har gjort detta. Men framför allt så betyder det massor för alla där ute i Sverige som nu kommer ha möjlighet att lära sig lite mer och lite bättre. Tack vare att ni har gjort den här investeringen i er själva i att hitta små sätt att utveckla vårt lärande. Jag vill också passa på såklart att tacka Patrik för en fantastisk session igår. Två saker som verkligen fastnade för mig. Vikten av att vi sätter våra mål Långsiktigt. Jag tycker det var grymt att han direkt kom in och säger Det här är vårt mål på sju års sikt. Learning är inte en quick fix. Vi behöver sätta långsiktiga mål för vilken typ av resultat som vi vill skapa. Samt att han hela tiden jobbar iterativt små steg för att utveckla lärandet. Vi ska inte revolutionera det över natt utan det handlar om att hela tiden tweaka till att göra saker lite bättre. Och på så sätt långsiktigt göra stor skillnad. Tack till Patrik, tack till er alla som var med igår. Sessionen idag kommer vara ganska lik så som det har sett ut sedan tidigare. Vi kommer ha den fantastiska Ina Weinbauer Heidel med oss idag som vår ämnesexpert. Hon kommer prata om What makes training really work? The 12 secret levers for transfer effectiveness. Alltså hur ser vi till att designa utbildningssatser för en högre effekt? En session kommer pågå ungefär fram till kvart i nio. Då öppnar vi upp som vanligt för frågor. Och i chatten har vi också som vanligt mina fantastiska kollegor Ellen och Julia. Och modererar den förtjänstfullt för att hela tiden se till att föda tillbaka frågor till mig som jag kan lyfta upp till Ina. Så se till att bibehålla det här engagemanget som ni har haft. Så fort det är en fråga, så fort det är en fundering ni har, se till att dela med er av den i chatten. Jag sa ju att den här dagen är lite speciell av många anledningar. Och en av de stora anledningarna är den gästen som vi har med oss. Dr. Ina Weinbauer Heidel. Eftersom Ina kommer genomföra sin session på engelska så kommer nu också jag hoppa över till engelska i den här introduktionen. I'm extremely glad and grateful to have Dr. Rina Weinbauer Heidel as our guest here with us today. And I must admit, 
I've been looking forward to this session for quite some time now. Ina is one of my personal idols when it comes to learning. And I'm so glad and so grateful that, that you will get the chance to listen in to her expertise today. Ina has dedicated her entire career to understand and improve the interface between transfer science and transfer practice. In her role as a scientist, as a facilitator, as a public speaker, and of course as head of the Institute for Transfer Effectiveness, she's worked relentlessly on improving and helping more people understand the science and utilize it practically. Ina is a world-renowned workplace learning and development individual. She's maybe best known for her book that is the bestseller and with the same name of the topic that we're doing this session around today, What Makes Training Really Work? The 12 Levers of Transfer Effectiveness, where she introduced a simple system for L&D professionals to succeed in boosting transfer. And we're, of course, really glad as well that we're able to offer you all um, a unique platform right now where she will be introducing these simple tactics to succeed with transfer. We've also gotten the chance to do a partnership training together with Ina, which we're really, really proud of. We will make sure that you get a link to this in the chat and make sure to check it out. It's a really unique program and I know some of you that are with us today has already signed up for it. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all there. Now, I'll leave the stage to Ina. I'm looking forward to seeing how you can help it, make it easy for us to succeed with transfer. A big, big welcome to the Nola Week stage, Ina. Wow, hello everyone. And thank you, Michelle, for this yeah, amazing introduction. No pressure at all. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. I know you are worth every word that I'm mentioning wow. here, and I'm so happy to be able to listen to you. The stage is yours. I'll leave you to it and I'll see you uh, in some time. Awesome. So what I would like to share with you today is my passion for transfer research and transfer design, because I'm absolutely fascinated by the fact that it is actually possible to systematically increase and manage the effectiveness of our training programs. A bit more precisely, after this about 40 minute session, three things should have happened. First, you should know more about the research on what makes training really work and the 12 secret levers to manage transfer. Second, you should have received at least three, pra three, three practical tools uh, to promote your transfer success. And third, after this 40 minute session, you should also know exactly what you are going to do next to further the, uh, increase the effectiveness of your trainings. Uh, yeah, and if you want to download all these tools, uh, you're very welcome to use them, to try them out. And as Michelle said, uh, we will share how to do that in, uh, at the end of the session. So let's, uh, let's get started. Several years ago, um, I had a quite easy life without this transfer issue. I worked at a well-known Austrian business school where I was responsible for designing customized MBA programs. And these programs were quite expensive, yet still fully booked. So my boss was happy and so was I. But as time passed, there were these questions coming to my mind again and again, and questions that probably every L&D manager asks him or herself at one point or another. And these are, are my programs really effective? So do we really change participants' behavior in a sustainable way? Does it even make sense what I am planning there? Uh, I guess many of you have been there, so you know that this question of meaning never let go of you that quickly. And I started doing some research. And to be honest, I was quite shocked to find out about the evaluation results of Kirkpatrick, Brinkerhoff, and all the other great transfer researchers. So if you need to make others aware of the transfer problem, and this is obviously the first step to solve it, I can recommend using the following picture from Professor Robert Brinkerhoff, who has about 30 years of experience in evaluating training programs. So 
he says on the average only about 15 percent of training participants try to apply what they have learned and get positive results and then we have participants who try to apply but somehow give up for example because they have a supervisor who says well nice what you learned there in training but we in our company do it differently here guess how many yeah, it's about 70%. And then we have those uh, who don't even try it. Uh, our favorite uh, participants, uh, again, about 15%. So what Robert Brinkerhoff is saying, and that's, that's really hard, is that in the end, 85% of what people learn in training is not used in the workplace in the long term. And that's not satisfying at all, isn't it? But I remembered when Robert Brinkerhoff also showed me that there are trainings with these results, where 85% apply what they have learned and get positive results. And I thought, yes, this is exactly what I want. And as I wanted to do my PhD anyway, I kind of finally found a topic that really fascinated me. I decided to find out what it takes to make trainings really effective. And my plan was kind of finding the holy grail of transfer success. Yeah, I quickly realized that I was not the only one because transfer researchers have been working on this question for more than 120 years and their results are really impressive. So they know quite well what it takes to make transfer happen. But they have a problem, a paradoxical problem transfer researchers have a transfer problem. They claim that practitioners are not making use of their findings. And this is no wonder, as you will see in a second, because now I would love to show you more than 120 years of transfer research on just one slide. So attention, please. Here we go. Yeah, a bit confusing, isn't it? But let's start from the beginning. So transfer researchers agree that there are three areas which are important for making, for making transfer happen. Our trainees, so the participants, the design of the training and uh, the organization, so the work environment of our participants. And within these three areas, they have found more than 100 determinants that influence transfer success. And there I thought, what am I supposed to do with 100 factors? No one in practice can ever manage so many factors. So that was really, yeah, kind of depressing after locking myself for three years in the office. It seems like there is no practical solution to the transfer problem. Yeah, and it took me some wine and a week of imaginary depression. But luckily, after take, uh, taking a deeper look at all these factors, I found something interesting. It turned out that many of these factors are kind of nice to know, but often a real practical help in terms of managing transfer. Let me give you an example. Take uh, one of the factors from the area trainee, so the factor cognitive abilities, basically intelligence. Researchers have uh, found out in their studies that intelligent people transfer more. Yeah. That's nice to know, but it offers no practical help when it comes to managing transfer. We cannot do an intelligence test before every training and yeah, that would be really strange. So as you can see, some of these factors are interesting, but no help when it comes to managing transfer. And this is what we did. We dropped all the factors that cannot be influenced or controlled by l &D professionals and we dropped all the factors that only have a slight influence on transfer success, so which only make researchers happy. And guess what? We ended up with 12. We call them the 12 levers of transfer effectiveness. We still see the three areas, trainee, training design, and organization. And within these three areas, we have the 12 levers that allow you and me and all L&D people out there to systematically manage the impact of our trainings. Scientifically speaking, these are the most significant determinants in trans, uh, of, of transfer effectiveness that can be controlled and managed by L&D professionals. More practically speaking, these are the, uh, the 12 factors that we need to care about to make sure the transfer will really happen. I have prepared uh, such an overview of all the 12 levers, which you can download if you want later on. 
But let's first find out how you can use these 12 levers to boost the impact of your next training. So let's dig a deep, uh, let's dig a bit deep, uh, deeper into two of these levers and talk about the promised practical tools, of course. Uh, and the first lever I would like to talk about is one I get very many questions about. It is support from supervisors. And this is, yeah, one of the most heavily researched determinant, and there are tons of studies on the importance of uh, the support that trainees get from their supervisors. And I've brought one of these studies with me today, uh, a study that you might want to share with your supervisors to make them aware of their outstanding role. It's a case study from a leadership development program at American Express. So, in this study, they took a closer look at a no improvement group, so a group in which nothing had really changed following the leadership development program. And they compared it with a high improvement group that had made big changes uh, in performance. So things like cycle time, processing speed, sales, and so on. And I would like to show you the three biggest differences between those two groups. The first difference is supervisor support. So the high improvement group had significantly more frequent one on one meetings between trainee and supervisor where they discussed how the learned could be applied. The second biggest difference was supervisor support. In the high improvement group, uh, trainees said that their supervisor has the attitude that training yeah, has a positive impact and is important and valuable. And the third big difference, surprise, surprise, again, supervisor support. In the high improvement group, participants said that their supervisor actively recognizes and rewards their improvements. So supervisor support is nearly always among the top reasons for, uh, for transfer success or failure. So what we as L&D professionals therefore should ask ourselves is, how can we promote that supervisors support, promote and demand the application of what trainees have learned? And now you might say, uh, yes, thanks, Ina, I already knew that. So the question is, how? How can we do that? Uh, and what we learned here is that uh, yeah, commitment beats bureaucracy. If we hand out long forms, which the supervisor have to fill in, in their pre-training meetings between supervisor and participant, we intensify a widely uh, spread view, and this is a harmful view. The view that the supervisor have to do work for the training department. But of course, that's a big misconception. In fact, it's the other way around. It's in the supervisor's interest to have competent, capable people. It's a leader's primary task to enable them to do a really great job, which of course includes developing employees. So in fact, the supervisor is the first L&D manager on site. And luckily, supervisor don't have to do or develop their people all alone. They can make use of the expertise of the, of the L&D department, their resources, their tools, their experience. So in order to get the supervisors on board, we have to build on this idea of service and make it easy for them to be great transfer supporters. By using these easy and smart tools they get from you, their L&D uh, professionals. So how can such a tool look like? I chose a um, special tool that I want to share with you because yeah, I'm still fascinated about the impact of these really simple tools uh, in companies all around the globe. And it is the self-check for managers. What we do is before the training program starts, uh, we, send it, we send out a message to the participant supervisors saying, ah, your employee will soon be joining us for a training program. Here's an overview, the goals, the benefits for you as a manager, plus, if you're interested, we have also attached a self-check, which you can use to find out whether you as a manager are already getting the most out of your employees training, just for yourself. And then there are self-check items on it, like I have communicated very clearly that I consider this training is useful and meaningful and that it is important that he or she attends. And then you answer these items on a scale from absolutely yes to absolutely no. 
And uh, yeah, those items are, of course, all science based. So it's kind of a summary of the best behaviors of transfer supporting supervisors. So kind of a cheat sheet, because many supervisors just don't know how transfer supporting behaviors look like. Yeah, and then they sum up the points and can read their results like this here. And uh, there we were really brave. And to be honest, uh, I was quite frightened when we used it the first time because the lowest evaluation result says, with your managerial approach, you risk uh, wasting both your team members' time and your company's money. So that was quite tough. But on the other hand, if they score high, it says, you are a true role model when it comes to getting the most out of a training. And after using this self-check, uh, participants, for example, told us, OK, our manager didn't just do the self-check for himself. He suddenly brought it along to the pre-training meeting and asked us as employees how we rated him on these criteria. He wanted our feedback to become a, a better transfer supporter, which was kind of absolutely fascinating. So you see, it is a really simple tool that hurts nobody, no pressure, no resistance but very often with an unexpectedly high impact. But what if you're a trainer or a training facilitator or external L&D consultant who is now thinking, okay, I have absolutely no access to my participants' managers. Yeah, that's a situation we sometimes have to deal with, with but even here you can do something. For example, suggest a trainee-led discussion like this one. You just send an email to your participants inviting them, please discuss these five key questions with your supervisor and tell us about his or her feedback on the training session. It's a small thing, not everybody will do it, but it is a step in the right direction. And it is already highly effective. We know from research that even a 15 minute discussion between trainee and supervisor has a significant impact on transfer effectiveness. And there are many more examples of how you can strengthen supervisor's commitment. You can invite the supervisor to the kickoff of the program. Uh, you can uh, make them have their pre-training discussion there in this kickoff so they can't escape. Or some of our customers even have a special module in their leadership development program where the leaders learn how to be great transfer supporters. And some, that's a really, yeah, impactful one, some have started to evaluate the support from supervisors just by adding a little question in their evaluation. They asked trainees in the feedback sheets, does your supervisor support you in applying what you have learned? A small change with a, with a huge impact because after a while you have a database saying, okay, we, we had a wonderful training, everyone was really, really motivated, but 90% say, uh, okay, our supervisors are not supporting us. So dear supervisors, what should we do with it? Should, should we continue doing this training or do we need to change anything here? So in summary, to make transfer happen, we need to get our managers on board. And the way we do it is with commitment and with those appealing, engaging, simple, but highly effective tools they get from you, their L&D professionals. Yeah, so let's see, sorry. <laughs> do we have time for another lever? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. I get the sign, the, the thumbs up, thank you. So, okay, there is uh, a second lever which I have prepared today. Um, and this is a lever from the area training design. It's kind of a quick win lever. So if you can't do anything, uh, this is maybe a lever you can start with. When it comes to the end of a great training program, trainees typically look like this guy. He leaves the training with a huge backpack full of all the great stuff learned in training. And at the feedback round, he says the famous sentence, I need to review all that stuff from training again and think about where and how I can apply these things. Unfortunately, we know that this is hardly going to happen. Why? 
because for most people, there is no time for it. When they return from their trainings face-to-face -face or virtual, they find endless work on their desk. Hundreds of mails, several colleagues who have an urgent question. There simply, there simply is no time and no cognitive capacity to review the training stuff. Furthermore, we know uh, that the motivation to apply is kind of at its peak at the end of a great training and then decreases quite fast. So with no time and a decreasing motivation, the training material often ends up in the shelf, unread and unapplied. So what we need is this. Trainees with a lightweight backpack that only contains the necessary information in a concrete and finished plan of how they can immediately uh, apply it. So how can we pack our backpacks in a transfer friendly way? Research again gives us a clear and convincing answer for that. And uh, I want to take you to a little trip to the uh, to the field of sports research to a study with people who tried to do more sports. Maybe you know that issue. <laughs> and the researchers there randomly assigned 248 adults to one of three groups. Every group got a special intervention, but here are the results first. So in group one, 38% exercised, group two, 35%, and in group three, an incredible 91% of the participants did. So what did they give them to make such a big difference? You will be amazed how easy and cheap the secret is. So group one was the control group. They normally get the strange tasks, and so did this group before the experiment started. They were asked to read three paragraphs of a completely unrelated novel which had nothing to do with the experiment at all. Group two was the motivation group. They got some information on the benefits of exercising, better health, reduced stress, all these kinds of things we already know. And as you can see, the motivational information did not have any yeah, good effect here. So what was the task for group three who exercised nearly three times as often as the other groups? It is so easy and trivial. They were simply asked to complete one single sentence, which was during next week, I will uh, do at least 20 minutes of rigorous exercise on Monday at 5 p.m. in the gym. That was it. Sentences like these are called implementation intentions or mini plans. So simply formulating an intention nearly tripled the chances of really doing it. And when I read that the first time I was okay, yeah, one study, maybe an accident. Yeah, I, I don't believe it. But uh, when I dig deeper into the research papers, uh, I found out that this amazing effect of intentions of uh, planning your action, not only your goal, but your action isn't random. It isn't a one time research discovery. The same effect was found in a lot of other studies as well. Implementation intentions double or triple chances for successes in various areas taking medication regularly, losing weight, eating healthier, getting better performance results in tests, or even finishing projects on time. So whatever we want to do and apply, if we formulate an intention and thereby develop a plan for the specific action we are going to take, it doubles or even triples the probability that we really do it. And that, of course, also applies for our training participants. If we want them to apply what they have learned, we need to make sure that they make an action plan and formulate concrete intentions. So the question we can ask ourselves in order to make more transfer happen is how can we promote the trainees prepare in detail and plan their actions while they are still in training? The rule of thumb is to reserve uh, about 10 to 20 percent of the training time for transfer planning throughout the training or at least at the end of a training. So if you do a very traditional two day training program, that means one or two hours of transfer planning. Don't let anyone leave the program without concrete actions, not only goals, but really actions of how, where and when they will apply what they have just learned. And one more tip, researchers, for example, from Stanford, PG Fogg, uh, also recommended to focus on so-called 
baby steps, really, really, really easy first implementation steps, just one or two minutes. Consciously use this motivation high at the end of a training and make sure that your trainees especially carefully plan their first one or two or three baby steps. The feeling of successfully having implemented those first steps raises their motivation and gives them the energy to take further steps as well. So with this easy and basic idea, you can double or even triple transfer success rates. And that is yeah, just amazing. Sorry. <laughs> uh, a super uh, simple and highly effective tool here, which we co-created with a customer, is uh, to do transfer planning with a folder like this. This folder, uh, they called it Skills in Action, is a standard part of every training at that organization, either digital or in a printed version, doesn't mind uh, matter. And every trainer is briefed about using this folder, especially at the end of a training program. What does it contain? On the left side, you see what I will remember. So only the most important stuff learned to make sure that uh, participants' backpack stays small. So here, just a little space for sorting out all that uh, uh, stuff they have written down to very, very, very uh, little parts. In the middle, we have how I will benefit. So what can I realize and achieve? That's kind of the fertilizer for their motivation, this bright vision that will encourage our trainees gut to stick with it. And finally, on the right side, we have got what I will do. This is uh, where their implementation intentions come in, in form of specific steps. And <clears throat> down there, the baby step story is implemented with my first step. So immediately on Monday, I will do this and this and that. Of course, with the done box to check off, very important because that gives us this wonderful feeling like we are a person of action. Yeah. By providing this simple and easy tool, the company has achieved that every training ends with a proper transfer planning. And now um, about um, three years of working with it, even uh, the participant supervisors ask for it. So when their employees return from training, they say, ah, oh, let's have a little meeting. Please come with your skills in action so that we can discuss the implementation and how, can, uh, and, and how I as a supervisor can support you. So this is amazing because it has become part of the company's learning culture. And this is just one way of how you can address the lever transfer planning. Yeah, I, I hope you got an idea of how to work with the 12 levers. Just look at every lever and decide on a nice little transfer tool that fits to your training, your participants in your organization. And the great thing is, the awesome, uh, the awesome thing is that there are hundreds of science-based transfer tools that you can choose from for any lever. So in fact, transfer design can be really, really easy. And for me, it's just a good feeling to do stuff that really works. Yeah. Uh, and yes, if you now have the feeling that you kind of want to dig deeper, if you are kind of on transfer fire, <laughs> there are several uh, possibilities. So the first is uh, to get today's transfer tools and this 12 lever overview. Uh, and you should see uh, a field underneath the stream where you can just type in your email so that these wonderful people from uh, Noli can send you all this all, all the materials through. And uh, furthermore, if you learn best through reading, there is a book called uh, What Makes Training Really Work. And for all those who want to kind of go all in, uh, who want to become part of our transfer nerd family, we have the Transfer Designer Certification Program. This is our flagship program uh, yeah, for everyone who, yeah, shares our passion for transfer design and as they are normally sold out quite quickly noli has decided to offer a special certification program just for you which already starts in april so if you feel like going all in then uh, see you there so yeah thank you very much and uh let's 
do something about this whole transfer thing. Let's make more transfer happen because I think this is exactly what makes our work as L&D professionals valuable and meaningful for our companies and for ourselves. Thank you. I'm the one saying thank you, Ina. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas, your thoughts on how we can make it easier to succeed with these things. Because I think that's what you're so good at doing, making it easy for us to succeed with these. And we've gotten a bunch of questions, so I'm, I'm glad that we have time to um, figure these ones out together. Uh, one question that we got from Anders is, he, he feels that uh, he knows the importance of working with transfer, but he, he feels that he ha always has to convince stakeholders that it's important. Do you have yeah. any suggestions, tactics for him to, to help him convince stakeholders that it is important to work with Definitely. before or after transfer? Yeah, that's such a huge issue to always talk about it and say it's so important and uh, others say, yes, it is important and afterwards nothing happens. Uh, for that reason, I think I have them even with me, uh, there are tools like this transfer card. So there's sounds strange now and, I, and I, can't, I can't show it to you, but there are tools uh, of how to convince people in a better way. It's showing them that there is a trainee area, uh, a training design area where we as L&D professionals can, care, uh, can take care about and that there is an organizational area as well. And if you let them estimate, okay, how well are our supervisors understand, uh, are supporting this training? How so really um, bringing it in their responsibilities also in kind of a, a kind of a touchable way that really helps this is one uh, idea that comes up right now the other thing is that you can uh, so a very good idea is to start with kind of a um, ceo baby uh, training program so uh, a training which is really important to the sea level and uh, develop their uh, a, a, a training design with a transfer concept that uh, covers all 12 levers. Because what I have experienced here quite often is that then CEOs say, okay, what have you done to this program everyone is talking about? And somehow, somehow something has changed. So can you do this kind of magic for the other program as well? Which is kind of fantastic. <laughs> and the right. third idea which I have is uh, kind of start implementing transfer tools that nobody cares so much about that doesn't bring too much resistance where you don't have to convince anyone like this transfer planning folder so no one will say no we won't do that it's yeah. really really easy and by implementing those small steps and afterwards in a, a presentation about transfer in one year or something like, like that saying okay we already have implemented transfer tools, this and this and this and that. Uh, we, are com we are fantastic. People said they like it. So why not continue with the next uh, standardized uh, tool? So this would be three first ideas. Amazing. I, I, I hear when you're we're speaking now, and we, we spoke about this before as well, the importance of thinking behavioral science when coming into <laughs> the design of our training. And for me, this is exactly what you're doing here. And, and I love that you mentioned uh, BJ Fogg. Um, I really want to recommend his book, Tiny Habits. It's a yes. great read for all of you that are interested in thinking about behaviors, how to, how to more easily fit them into your everyday life. And we can find so, many, so much inspiration from these tactics in our design of our learning journeys. Uh, there's so many great things. And some of the things that you were mentioning here, making it so easy that you're not even thinking about that you're doing it. And all of a sudden realizing, I've been doing this for quite some time. Like BJ Fogg saying, I'm actually a runner. And you haven't even realized that you've been running twice a week. I think great that you mentioned these things. Um, we got another question. You, there was a lot of different things that affected transfer um, in this triangle that you showed. Um, <laughs> Are there any of them that you find counterintuitive that you think most people like, really, is, is that something that is affecting it? Is there any one of these? Yeah, there were several factors which are, yeah. So 
the thing that stepped out to me most was that a lot of those factors are just not that easy to change. So kind of, of, of course, the learning culture is influencing transfer effectiveness, of, of course, but we cannot change it till tomorrow. And I'm kind of a really down to earth person. I like research where uh, that shows me what I can do as a next step. I love that kind of uh, things. And this was also uh, where on what we focused when we chose those 12 levers. So what are the factors by which we can really um, work immediately? So that was one thing. Uh, a lever that really surprised me was, uh, is called transfer volition. Really strange name. Um, um, we, I think we, we would translate it with willpower. So sticking to something and I'm kind of the person I, I always thought, okay, like, like this, this American mindset, yeah, you have to stick to it and, and try hard and uh, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And it turned out that this, um, yeah, is not the best way of doing it. So bringing in energy to sticking to it is the completely wrong way. It's the other way around. Like we know now from behavioral sciences, we have to make it easy. We have to make application of what we learn fun. We have to work with with uh, gadgets, with uh, uh, yeah, kind of relying on this playful area. So this and I th that's one of the levers I kind of yeah, I'm really li I, I really like flirting with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> Also, also uh, really also for myself, because there's so much in there where you just allow yourself to go with this fun flow, to go where, where your inner voice takes you. Yeah. And yeah, that was a, that's a really interesting lever, transfer volition. So. <laughs> I agree. And I think that one is, when I introduce transfer volition, I think it's the one that most people are, the first reaction is like, okay, what is that? And then the more you talk about it, the more people are like, I get that. Like, I understand yeah. why that is important, but the initial reaction is really, what is that? That, that sounds hard, tough, really yeah. something strange. But when you start talking about it, a lot of people can really see that being a huge effect and a huge importance for the transfer that we're getting. So I, I agree. Uh, it, it was not, uh, to be honest, like the first time I read your book, that was not one of the the, the levers that stuck with me. I think that mm -hmm. was maybe the second or third time I read it that was like, this one, <laughs> this one is actually really important. Um, so I think that's, that's a good part to be aware of that as well. Um, we, we got another question regarding the, the certi uh, certified transfer designer program. Um, Anders is curious to hear what's the biggest differences you've seen from participants that go into that and then that they are doing differently when they're out of the program. What's the, what's the cool thing that you've seen change happening in the people that has been in the program? I love this question because uh, it already talks about transfer goals. So which kind of behavior uh, do people show afterwards, which is amazing that yes. we only talk about transfer goals right now. So um, I think the biggest difference is that afterwards participants uh, keep saying, okay, now it's really easy to design transfer. Before it, it was kind of a black box. Okay, how can I do it? And it's hard and we've tried so many things and so on. Uh, and after the program, people keep telling me now I can't, I can't do training programs without transfer tools anymore. And sometimes that's kind of annoying <laughs> because because yeah, now I, I, I see transfer and transfer tools and levers all everywhere and, and all around. And a lot of uh, participants even use it for their uh, change programs, for their coaching programs, stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, yes, so that's a big, a huge difference that uh, afterwards transfer design is easy. It's logical. It's just uh, uh, because there is also an online toolbox included where we collect all that stuff, all the uh, transfer tools from around the globe, uh, who uh, which transfer designers use, they share it there. And then you just say, okay, I need something for the lever support from peers. Let's look at the uh, toolbox or oh, this one. No, 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 no. Yeah, I take that one and uh, put it on yeah, my training program. So that that's the basic idea to make it really, really easy. And yeah, become a transfer nerd. 
unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I also that's that's something I'm I'm really proud uh, proud at. Uh, a lot of LMD people afterwards say my position in the organization has changed. So when the program started, I was more feeling like I'm a uh, yeah I'm an organizer of training programs. And afterwards, it was more like, okay, now I um, I am seen as a kind of strategic business partner when it comes to behavior change in the organization. So people talk to me, other people talk to me, and I talk to other people. Yeah. And uh, this is this is the thing I'm really proud about. Yeah. Cool. I, I think that, uh, I see a lot of people feeling those things because I mean, you get a different kind of language. I mean, you, you get you get new wordings, new ideas mm -hmm. to talk about when introducing these levers, these transfer tactics that you can use. Yeah. Um, we got a great question from Jessica as well. She's thinking about the transfer planning activities. How do you do that in, or what's your suggestion to succeeding in that in a digital learning? Um, yeah, really, yeah, really good learning. question. Yeah. yeah, so different ways. So um, it depends on uh, if you are, uh, if the trainings are completely self-paced and there is no trainer, nothing, then you have to make it even easier. That means, for example, after uh, or at the end of a, a training session, there is kind of a drop down field where you can say, OK, now choose your first baby steps. Here are three suggestions for baby steps. Either choose one or take uh, take you take your own uh, uh, baby step, and a, a really good thing is that even add some uh, success on it to share it kind of a, on a on a public board. Share it with others. We know that from doing sports. If you tell any uh, uh, everybody, okay, I'm doing some running tomorrow, it gets harder to not do it. Um, so that would be an idea for if you. I uh, have really a self-paced kind of learning, at least this, okay, type your uh, next baby step in. And you can even combine it with, uh, with the certification, uh, with the kind of uh, the certification afterwards. That's a really strange thing that we hand out certificates or kind of papers for being either physically present during the training or for clicking through which kind of signals, okay, uh, the, the aim of the training is that you are physical there or that you have clicked through, but we don't care about transfer, we don't measure it and you get your certificate anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a really strange habit and there are a lot of strange habits, that's lever 12. So you can even say, okay, uh, if you are, as, as soon as you have implemented your first baby steps, let us know because this will be printed on your certificate. This was a really, really great thing I learned from transfer designers. So they implemented uh, it that you choose baby steps and as soon as you have implemented them, you can print out your certificate saying for which kind of transfer success you received your certificate. And this way you show we are not only caring about you clicking through, but we are caring about you applying what you have learned. Yeah. This would be one thing. And of course, any kind of transfer planning can also be done in a, a live online session. So at the end of a training program, just let people write down their, uh, their uh, plans. Uh, show it to the camera, make a screenshot, and after, let's say, a week or so, send them this photo again. Then you have this reminder as well, a priming again, and uh, you have the spotlight effect, this effect where people believe, okay, everyone is seeing my plan, so I really have to do it. There's, that's not the truth, but this is how we kind of uh, see it ourselves. So this would be some first ideas. Awesome. Great. And I, again, Everyone can do this. These are small, simple things that we can design into all kinds of digital learning. And it, this was actually a great segue into a question from Magdalena that was about around, um, well, action planning or um, action plans that we write. How can we make sure that we know that they're working with these, have follow-ups on the activities in the action plans that they're creating? What's your tips and ideas here? Uh, so, Basically, also when you remember those those uh, um, those little guys from Brinkerhoff, which I showed at the beginning, uh, there always will be some people uh, who won't apply what they have learned. This is a real hard part for me, because I yeah, 
I don't want to believe it, but still, <laughs> that's the way it is. And I would definitely recommend to go with those 85% who want to work with it. Right. So not everyone who will uh, write down their plans uh, will really do it, but a lot more will do it than uh, uh, compared to not writing it down at all. Mm -hmm. Follow up uh, uh, activities could be, uh, for example, like the thing I shared with the with the certificate. So a certificate only to those who can really show that they have applied something. I have seen, which is really nice as well, presentations where uh, where participants uh, present what they have uh, successfully implemented in their daily business. And if you then invite their supervisors and kind of a opinion leader, unit leader or something like that to these presentations as well, then you can be quite sure that the supervisors will support it because <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, their boss will be uh, in the program as well. So they want their employees to perform high, which is awesome, really awesome. So that would be an idea. Um, you can have, so the easier version is to have a second evaluation where they shared, okay, you have planned uh, your baby steps. Have you already implemented it? And if you haven't implemented them, uh, what are the reasons for, the, for, for it? Again, you can use the 12 levers because I didn't get any supply from my supervisor or uh, I was not motivated enough or I, th there would be transfer motivation, the lever transfer motivation or other stuff as well. So find out which lever is the one that is, that should be fixed to get more results uh, the next time. Yeah. Awesome. I, um, I, I want to have, I have one idea as well that I, that I really like and I try to use as much as possible as well. And I, it correlates back to what you mentioned with the motivation curves. Um, BJ Fogg's great visualization of how we're motivated more in certain, certain specific situations. Um, one way I think we can utilize that at the end of a training is to have people add calendar events for themselves in the upcoming weeks, um, maybe even months after training, with just short reflecting questions, which yes. maybe are nudging them to remind them of that action plan. So have yeah. them put in a calendar event in two weeks' time, tell them to say, well, add these questions into that event. The event could be just 15 minutes, but uh, what's one thing that you've done in the last two weeks that you're really proud of? What's one thing from your action plan that you need to start doing in the upcoming weeks to succeed to reach your desired outcome? Like, yes. as an example. Simple yes. ways to nudge people and be like, right, the training. That was what yeah. I was working on. These were things that I wrote. So exactly. simple way to get in there in their everyday life as well. Another awesome, really awesome uh, uh, tool is, which I learned uh, um, from the Alcoholics Anonymous. I, yeah. I, I had a research trip there, which is really fantastic. Pair up people to uh, transfer coaching partnerships and uh, make the coaches, so everyone is coachee and coach as well. And we normally make the mistakes that we are talking to the coachee kind of, yeah, yeah go to your coach and get some support. But people mm -hmm. don't like to be supported. They want to be supporters. That's a completely uh, different self image. Yeah. And if you say, okay, dear coach, uh, make sure that your coachee gets his or her support. Ask him, have you already implemented your baby steps? Because at this moment, they are kind of reminded, okay, I am the coach. I have, I am, um, I'm a role model. So I need to implement my stuff as well. And yeah. that has really changed a lot when we, uh, uh, when, when we kind of tweak that roles around. Yeah. So pair them up, up and say, okay, dear coaches, you are responsible to make sure that your coachee uh, succeed in implementing his or her baby steps. Uh, and then they get a little plan of how they can support them, write, in, write, write them an email on next week, uh, say this motivational stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, that really works well in a lot of companies. You, all, you always have to keep in mind which participants are we working with, in which company are we working. That's really important. This is somehow where research is kind of strange because they somehow say, okay, this is the the holy grail tool and i don't think that there is one because every training is different every company and this is why we need lnd people who know their uh surrounding their environment really well mm. yeah no, no i i think like that there's got to be there, there's so much 
potential in nudging the supporter than sending that nudge to the individual that is trying to do it because the human interaction becomes so much more powerful than when I'm just getting a digital nudge. The digital nudge can help someone support someone, but it's, it won't make the difference for that individual. I think that's exactly. the simple key takeaway from that one. I think we've got a really great question from um, Mikkel. And, and this one, I actually, I stumbled upon myself first time I read your book, the difference between transfer motivation and transfer volition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know the difference very well from myself um, when I do my New Year resolutions. Motivation is uh, how important it is for me when I say, okay, I really want that. So wanting something. Uh, but I would say on January the 3rd, volition kicks in. Yeah. <laughs> this is this really, I, I'm still motivated, but somehow I don't find this kind of energy to really stick to it. And now we know from research that this is not a question of motivation. Volition, so this willpower thing, is much more on have I implemented strategies to make it as easy as possible, as simple as possible. So volition and motivation are two different things in terms of the one says I want it and the other one is uh, I stay on the track. I really go through it. I stick to it. Yeah. And yeah, these are two completely different things and uh, very often we keep motivating people telling them why it's good and talking about the why which is definitely really important but we don't have in mind that we uh, need to make things easy to so really work on this volition thing this is also something we learn from behavioral science so often you can motivate people really 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 uh, much but that won't change their behavior alone. If you don't make it easy enough, fun enough, uh, this is volition. This is willpower. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. We got um, another question from Frederick. Um, oh, this was from Jessica actually regarding uh, supervisors. Um, th this first activity that you gave out with it, with the questions, were yeah. what was the reactions? Because I think what Jessica <laughs> is, is thinking here, like. This is a lot. Like, will I have to do this? Like, what was their reaction when they got this? Yeah, uh, as I said, we were really nervous <laughs> because I had no idea how this would end. And we tried it in a, uh, the first time we, we used it was a big uh, international automotive company. So I was, okay, let's, ju let's just do it. <laughs> we are researchers, we, can, we, we are allowed to do that. And the results were just yeah they were they were just amazing because again we learned afterwards when we looked into that uh, a bit deeper one reason why a lot of supervisors don't support transfer is because they have no idea of how of how they can support it they people are so so L D tells them please support the application of the learn but the problem is they have no idea about what they learn in training so there, a good idea is to kind of make a little summary for the supervisors. That's a really easy thing. So a short video or something like that, or just tell them, ask these three questions about the content. So it looks at least like they would know what the training was about. Again, making it easy for them. So, and with this kind of self-check, they got an idea of, ah, this is what you mean by supporting transfer. Yeah, I can do that. That's, that's quite easy. Yeah. So the results were really amazing. I got so many calls from supervisor who said, okay, I just realized um, I have never supported transfer. Uh, can I participate in the training as well? Because this time I want to make it different. And I was, what? So huh? that was, that's, that's strange. Um, Again, not everybody is doing the self-check. So some just uh, just put it away. And we also learned to never make it uh, uh, so uh, obligatory. Is, Compulsory, is, yeah. Is, yeah, thank you. Um, because then it's kind of a, yeah, then it's pressure. And then they don't dare to do it. But if it is voluntarily, like those tests in the, in the newspaper, just, yeah, I want to find out more about myself. We love those kind of things. Yeah. So it's just for myself. And then you get an idea of how they can support transfer. So 
I definitely recommend to just try it out and see what happens. <laughs> Try it out. I think that's a great way to end the time that we have together. Try it out. Just try small things. Maybe think that they won't even notice that they're doing. And I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, in, I'm so sure that you will make all the difference in the world in your training initiatives. Ina, thank you so much for this. Thank you everyone that has been a part of today. It's been a part of this week. I really encourage you to check out the Certified Transfer Designer. It's a great program. It, it really makes all the difference. And I hope to see a lot of people that are in um, the Noli Week in that certification program. Thank you everyone so much for the week. Thank you the Noli team that has made this possible without all your hard work. This would never have been a reality. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone, make sure to make these small changes the small changes that will make the big difference for a lot of people. You'll all get a small evaluation in just a few seconds. I really encourage you to just take those 30 seconds to give us some feedback on how we can improve, how we can do this one even better. Thank you, Nola Week 2023. We see you guys again in 2024. Take care and have a great Friday and a great weekend when it's time for that. All the best. Cheers. Cheers.